What's up guys, Tim Little, Matt Allen. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin and welcome back to our 2024 Holiday Buyer's Guide series. Today's video, video number five in the series. Today we're talking everything tackle storage. Tackle storage is one of the most difficult things for anglers. Whether we're talking storage in your garage or storage in a closet somewhere, storage on your kayak, on your boat, traveling on the road, tackle storage and tackle management is a huge part of bass fishing. It doesn't matter if you've got two packs of hooks or you have lost your mind like we have, it's a problem. Getting your tackle organized will do a few things for you. It'll save you a lot of money because you won't destroy gear, right? You'll stop rusting gear out. You'll stop having things just get wasted. You'll also stop wasting time on the water and when you're prepping to fish. That is a huge part of proper tackle management. Now, the more tackle you have, obviously the bigger the problem. But getting that stuff organized where you can grab it on the water, on the fly, and get what you need is a huge deal. Tackle Warehouse has got a sale running. It's Cyber Monday. So they've got a sale running and tackle storage items are included in that sale. So we timed this to try and help you guys as much as we could. After this video, we'll take a little bit of a break. Then we'll jump right back into the buyer's guides again, going all the way towards Christmas. Tim, you want to kick us off? We'll just start grabbing. Sure. We got a whole bunch of stuff in here. We got swim bait storage. We got hook storage, bait storage, soft plastic. Line. We got all sorts of stuff. So we're probably just going to roll through this, uh, I guess, by category. We'll maybe by category. Sure, at let's, least we'll start that way. Oh, yeah, we'll start that way. So let's start with terminal, right? Matt talked about rust. You don't want to go out and spend your hard-earned dollars on new treble hooks, upgrade it, you know, all your stuff, and then get to the water and realize that you got a, a tackle box Whoa. full of rust. I've had that happen. It sucks when you're throwing that stuff away. So uh, let's go here. Terminal. So this is the Plano. This is a uh, Plano Edge box. This is their terminal box. It's a slim box, so it's not nearly as tall as a traditional 3,700 size box. Uh, it's a slim box, but what's cool about this box, I don't want to dump it because that would be sucky, but it has individual <laughs> hook containers. You can see right there, this little lid pops up and I can take all of the hooks that I need for a specific, maybe I'm walking the shoreline, maybe I'm, you know, bank fishing, pond fishing, whatever. I can put that in my pocket, put it in my tackle bag, whatever. But when I have it in the boat, I have all of my hooks labeled. I have them in individual uh, little containers. It's really easy. Uh, it's really accessible and it's all waterproof. Okay. So that's that. That's that Plano. Let's just run through the line. So you can see right here, I have a bunch of worm hooks, drop shot hooks, drop shot weights, all the different stuff. What I've really switched to in the last year or so is these little guys right here. These are the Spro terminal boxes. So you can see right here, this one says wacky. Okay. I have one that says drop shot. I have one that says, yeah, that's <laughs> nice. That's all of my split rings. Split rings and little CPS springs. So when you're in a boat and you have limited storage, you want to take up as little space as possible. So like this guy right here, this wacky, check this out. Pop this open. Again, they're waterproof, but I have all of my rings labeled for wacky rigging. I have all of my hooks, all of my weights, got uh, some some weighted wacky heads, all of that stuff, and it fits in this little this little footprint. So uh, this is, I believe this is the extra large size. This is the medium size, and there is a small that's really small. That's like a, for an SD cards, but uh, these work really, really well if you don't need a full 37 size, 3700 size box. Another great box. This is the Busby Colony box. The benefit to these boxes is you could probably run this over with your truck and boat. Like they are so <laughs> strong and waterproof. Uh, the deal with the Busby boxes, they have, I don't wanna, this is Matt's box. I don't wanna dump this all out, but each of these individual containers pop in and out. It's like yep. Legos, right? You build your box how you want to store your gear, but the quality is, is second to none. They're super strong, okay? Oh, we got terminal for days, don't we? Yeah, just do a, it. An, another one more terminal box for you. 
This is their weight box. So Plano, again, Plano Edge line. This has uh, little containers to keep your tungsten weight. So if you're a guy that likes to throw a lot of Texas rigs, Carolina rigs, you flip, you punch. This has Dude, little... we have all knocked the paint off our tungsten. Yes, that this is the work. This has little individual containers that keep all of your weights organized by size, by color. They pop in and out. If you're a guy that wants to mix and match, now you can do half of these, half of your little hook containers. You can really uh, play around and save a lot of space in your boat. So you can that's... you can really let your OCD run wild. Yeah. <laughs> Organization, right? It saves time on the water. It does. You know, if you're pre-fishing, you need to know. I mean, it's all about time, right? You want to maximize your time on the water and uh, the potential to catch fish. So, absolutely. So we're just at random going to go through this stuff. Now we don't think that any one individual needs all of this. That is not the point of this. The point here is that tackle organization, while expensive. Or, I'm sorry, while important, a lot of the items are expensive. So we wanted to show you some actual physical hands-on how, how we, we use some of the different things so that you're not just guessing and gambling with your money or asking your loved one to buy the wrong thing going into the holidays. We want to show you some of the ways that we use it. And if something jumps out at you that strikes strikes a chord, that's an item that will benefit you. Tim and I are freakish tackle junkies and there's two of us, right? We're both tackle junkies. That's how this situation happens. Uh, let's just jump into this at random. Just a couple of items here. I throw a lot of hair jigs. Hair jigs are another one of those things that's difficult to store. The reason why is that they're bulky and they've got a hook in them and they're prone to rust. Uh, the other thing is that if you let hair jigs sit free in compartments, they'll tangle with each other. The hair will wrap on hooks and it, I mean, it's no different than not brushing your hair. It turns into a nightmare. They are junk. I've had to throw away bundles of hair jigs that just got ruined. Two different ways that I store them. This is a Plano box. Individual hair jigs just clip in. This is basically it's a fly, foam. Box, like a fly box. It's exactly what it is. It's a fly box and you just stick them in that foam and it comes in some different sizes. And then this is a Rapala box that is super cool. It's two-sided. I can open both sides and it's all hair jigs. Oh, I had one jump out on me. Let me clip him back in, show you Got how easy it is. Got three cut slots in the foam for you to put your hooks in. So on the, cool box. yeah, on the inner, it's pre-cut foam. You just set them right in, just stick them. And then on the outside, it's hard rubber grooves that you can stick them in. Both work extremely well. I love this box as well and again it's two-sided so for that ocd you can separate color you can separate size but i've probably got 75 hair jigs in that little box right there just a really really good way to store those things uh, here's another one from busby i'll i'll get to the main busby stuff in a minute we started using this a year or two ago Come we dabbled second. in it we just wanted to try something different really fell in love with it and I've since branched out quite a bit. They make these bags, they call them fast flats. They're thin bags, come in all different shapes and sizes. Uh, this one is a half large, so it's half the height of a normal bag, but these have worked so well for me for storing and organizing my spinner baits. I'm one of those people who's fanatical about spinner baits. I've collected them forever. I have way too many. I store them by size, by color, by brand. And in a boat, even in a bass boat, my spinnerbait storage took up way too much space. I was able to downsize it into these bags and there's probably 20, 25 spinnerbaits right there and those two little nothing bags. I gained so much space back in my boat. Why don't you grab some stuff? Okay, so continuing on with, so understand too that, you know, Matt said we have a ton of stuff. Obviously, we go through a ton of tackle. We try a lot of tackle. We buy more tackle than we should because we're always <laughs> trying new stuff. So yes. that in turn leads to storage issues. So um, if you're a guy that likes to have technique specific boxes, um, this, these guys work really, this is the traditional, this is the Plano Edge 3700, just traditional box 
I went and I, I took some of those. This is, I'll show you this real quick. That's my punch box, right? So if I'm going to Florida, I'm going somewhere, I'm going to be punching or, or throwing heavy ounce, ounce and a half, two ounce weights. Uh, this is my box. So technique specific boxes. I have, mm -hmm. I have individual slots that I can play around with to put my baits in. I, I have smaller slots I made for my hooks, the different size hooks. I got my punch stops. I have my weights. But this is a complete box that I can grab. I can throw it in the box. Maybe I'm going with Matt. I'm riding in his boat. I throw it in my bag. I have everything right there uh, as opposed to a weight box, a hook box, a bait bag, whatever it needs to be. But yep. being able to interchange all that stuff, having it being waterproof, I don't have to worry about the rust. Um, that's a really cool box. Um, a rigs. That's We're good. getting into the season, and Tackle Warehouse actually came out these last year, I believe. Yep. This is a cool little storage. Uh, it's it's holds four tubes, and in each tube. Right, you see that? How cool is that? So you can have your your rigged swim baits. You don't have to worry about the tails being kinked. They slide in and out. You can put multiple rigs in each tube. But I have a bladed, this one says bladed. So I have a bladed and a non-bladed. Nice. And I have all of my A-rigs stored in that guy right there. Really cool. And that's a pretty inexpensive bag too. That's a it's, really good solution. It's a really cool solution for storing your A-rigs. Now that we're going into winter, it's a rig season, right? Um, that's a great way to uh, to store all of that stuff. One more from Plano. This is their uh, spoon box. This is how we store. Yeah, I don't know what that box is for, but it works so good for spoons. I call so it a spoon good. box because you can take your big flutter spoons and pop them right out, put them right back in the in the slit. The little, I don't, what do you want to even call those? I don't even know. I don't know. It's a rubberized mat that you can just stick them in, right in, in, the any, in any shape. Vertically, horizontally, but you could have your small spoons, your big spoons. It works really well. If you a, are a Magnum spoon guy, that's a really cool box to check out. Yeah, that's the best way I've ever figured out to store them. And let me jump into this one. Yep. Let's talk about these Plano, or I'm sorry, these Busby boxes. Uh, in the Busby line, they're called colony boxes. Uh, you've got the Colony 28 are your full size box, and then the Colony 15s are uh, that smaller downsized box. These are really interesting. Tim already hit it on the head. They're super durable. Uh, you can change out the different containers inside. I'll open this one. Hopefully, I don't dump it. We've got full length containers, small containers squares, you know, all sorts of different things. This was a trip we were going on. Uh, I build a lot of trip boxes. So I'm headed somewhere, I grab one of those, two of that, three of that. And for a lot of people, that's how they organize all their tackle, right? Mm -hmm. Like you take your two spinner baits, you put them in this slot. You take your glide bait, you put it in that spot. You put your crank baits up here. It's a really convenient way to waste no space. Uh, I have been very, very impressed with these boxes, so I have continued to expand. Uh, more and more of my tackle have, has been moved over to these uh, in the last year, year and a half. So that's the standard. Here's the deep. Uh, that one's full of that one's full of square bills. Absolutely stacked with them in that deep box. And then again, that sh that smaller profile. This one is all my BFS topwater. And again, no wasted space. I've got longer baits here, thicker baits here, all my little poppers across the bottoms in their individual squares. The one thing I'll say is that if a guy is starting to get into those Busby boxes, there's a lot there because there's all the little different containers. So something to think about going into the holidays is this. That's that. <laughs> there's. It's literally a starter kit. It's six of their 2,800 boxes because the Buzzy, Busby boxes, it's high end. Like you're, you're buying a tackle solution one time. Uh, so you're going to pay for it, but it lasts. It's waterproof. It's super strong. So when you buy this thing, it's six 2,800 size boxes, the big ones, and then 78 of the bins. And you can pour this thing out and it's, it's like playing Legos. Legos right? You're just popping them in, getting the exact shape and organization that you want. But that starter kit is genius because it's just a one and done. And for most people, that will hold all the tackle they own and you're you're done. That's a really cool 
given that we're right around the holidays. Yeah, the, uh, can you hand me that, the 28, just the normal size 28? Another cool feature about these boxes, I mean, I'm gonna go off on a little bit of a tangent here. If you're a guy that has, that likes to run GoPros or you're filming your, your fishing days out on the water, this is a great box because it has the different sizes uh, putting your GoPros in your, your POV cameras, your batteries, your charger, your cables, all that stuff. And this also works really well if you're into shooting, your, all your gun cleaning supplies, all that. That's what I have all my stuff in. These are really universal. They work. My wife's always trying to take them around the house to store stuff, but they're, <laughs> these are really strong boxes. Like I said, they're, they're rust resistant and having the interchangeable pieces allows you to do a lot of cool things. Yeah. Uh, let's do, let's do the swim bait containers. We'll, we'll make a little space here. Three of them. The swim bait boxes. Uh, that's traditionally how I've done my swim baits. I'm, I, <laughs> I'm a disaster, right? I would get the Plano deep with nothing in it and just, oh, they're stacked in there, buddy. He's got a hinkle shot in here. Just, just laying, just laying in there. Some bukas, all sorts of things. All in sorts it. of custom Some stuff. Some custom stuff no one's ever seen. Let's close yep. that back up. Uh, that's traditionally how I do it. And it is, I mean, it is like an abomination to custom baits to just stack them, but it's, <laughs> I've done it forever. Uh, but there are better solutions for sure. Two of them being these two right here. The I Surrender bags, we've talked about these for years. This is just a really, really good space saver. They come in different sizes. But you can take your various glide baits, wake baits, soft swim baits, whatever it may be, pile them in there, fold it up, throw that strap around it, and you can stick that in a compartment, stick it in a backpack, put it wherever. This one is awesome. This is from Lakewood. Lakewood has been around, I mean, forever. In the musky world, that's how people store big baits because you want to take care of your stuff. I have loved the Lakewood boxes forever, but the issue is that in bass fishing, we've got a lot of bigger, like 10 to 12 inch baits. And most of the boxes ended like here and you couldn't quite put the giant baits in there. They would hit and the tails would kink. When I saw this particular box, and again, in the video description, we're going to link all of this in the order that we talked about it. So you go down there, you find the Lakewood box, it'll go to the right one. Uh, and it doesn't matter if you're watching this on YouTube, Facebook, tacticalbass.com, wherever you are, there's a description. You might have to click more, scroll down, click more again, might be the three little dots. On our website, you just scroll down, it's all right there. But it's there on all those platforms, straight to the specific product. But this one has eight hangers inside of it. And you can take, your baits, and they just sit right down in these slots and they're hanging in there. So they're touching, what else is in here? They're touching nothing. They're just free floating in these slots. Tails are in perfect shape. Paint's not getting messed up. Nothing is ever kinked. Now, you can hold a lot less baits this way, but they are much more protected. So if you're a high-end bait guy, or you've got a handful of baits that you really care about, you don't wanna be beating them up, destroying them, this is a phenomenal way to hang them in place and everything is always perfectly straight when you wanna fish. Yeah, if you got room in your boat to sit that vertically, that's a really cool way. And then again, having that ice runner bag, you can put this in a pocket, you don't have to worry about the tails kinking. Yep. This is just kind of a, you can put it just grab and go. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. That takes a lot of space, right? That's not a space saver. That's a bait Tail. saver. Yeah, yes. exactly. Um, so now I ended up going. Yeah, I ended up with this little guy right here. This is the Plano Elite. This is just a little like 3600 size crankbait box. This is one of your boxes that works really well if you're on the go. You want to throw a few square bills, a few mid sized cranks, maybe some shorter top waters. Just a really universal box. Uh, a box that'll fit into your smaller backpacks, fit in smaller compartments, but it's a really universal box and it has kind of an angled uh, insert so the, the hooks get, go away from the baits, they kind of sit up underneath, but uh, that's a really cool little crankbait box, especially if you don't have more than, I don't know, say 20, 22 crankbaits, that guy stores them all. Mm -hmm. Let's do one for the guy who doesn't have a boat, the guy who's on the bank. 
This bag, we're always trying different things, right? And we're going through different backpacks looking for the solution. And this little tiny bag is the best one I've ever found. This is Aftco's Urban Angler Bag. Uh, and I literally keep this one packed. I've got some standard stuff in here that I like to throw when I'm bank fishing, and this thing is always loaded. So it's got a water bag in it, so you've got water to drink, super low profile, rod storage, so you can bring a spare rod. I keep tools in here. Then you keep all your soft plastics in the next one. At least you're supposed to. I've got stuff crammed in there. A little Busby box. Oh, that's exactly what that is. There's the little Busby box. Random shaky head. You put that back. <laughs> Never know when you need a shaky head. And then that larger main compartment, which will take a 3600 size box, but I've got all my loose plastics in there. I've got line in there. All the things that I need when I'm out there walking the bank. But again, it's also got water. Yeah, it's got that last compartment that holds the bladder. And it's super, super low profile. I really, really like this bag. That is the best bag I've ever found because it's not big and bulky, but it has all the things that you need. All right, jumping over to line and reel storage. You know, line line can get expensive, right? Cool. So you want to take care of line. So I don't know how Matt does it. How I do it, uh, I have two of these. This is the Plano line box. I don't know exactly what it's called, but uh, it holds your traditional like 200, 300 yard spools of line in here. We have those little Maxima bands on there that keeps keeps the line organized. Like blowing up. But what genius. This is a, a mono box. So you my box is actually matte, so I'll have like 8, 10, 12, 14, 20, 25 for my monofilament leader, and they'll have another one for my fluorocarbon leader. Four, five, six, seven, eight, 10, 12, right? Uh, depends on what I can fit in there, but so I'll have a floor and a mono in the boat, right? That has all my leaders, and then uh, leader line, and then if I want to store bulk spools or bigger, uh, you know, travel with my line, this is a, a cool little bag from Sunline. It comes with some inserts in here that you can use or not, or choose not to. You can put your bigger bulk spools in. You can put your real big spools in. You can put a lot of line, especially if you're on the road. You know, Matt and I, it's we do a lot of shore fishing. We do a lot of kayak fishing. We do a lot of jet boat fishing. And then we travel the country, right? So we do right. all of it. So we're always grabbing stuff, organizing stuff. And uh, when we need to be on the road or we need to take a lot of line with us, that's the way to go. Yeah, that's literally the one that I carry when we're going on the road. It's like, it's a, it's my main braids and my main fluorocarbon. So no matter what happens, no matter how bad I blow up a reel, and then we cut it out so you don't see it, <laughs> just kidding. No matter what happens, I can keep going. I've got all the line I need in one place. Yeah, that bag right there, mine, that's actually Matt's, mine, it has the, the little little elastic bands in there that you can wrap around the yep. spools and you can actually spool in it. It's a, it's a really cool bag. So the biggest thing that we ran into and when we started traveling all over the country, out of country, airplanes, all that stuff is real storage, right? We spend all this money on, on, uh, on gear, on our rods and reels, reels, especially it's just hard to take care of, make sure they're not getting, you know, grinding each other, uh, rubbing against each other, eating the side plates off, all that sort of stuff. So this is a Plano reel bag. So you can see, again, everything's adjustable. You can take your reels and pop them in and out, have them based on size, whatever. But more importantly, it just takes care of... You get some fancy reels. You yeah, just keep talking. You just some older there. DC. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. How cut a TEs. Um, anyway, so that's the way that you can store your reels and not have them uh, beat up. It's a, it's a, a hard bottom, hard top. Um, I think we used to what, carry these on usually with us. We'll carry, yeah, uh, carry yeah. these on. Carry it on the plane. When we're traveling out of country. You got to um, ship your rods unless you carry travel rods, but you right. can carry your reels. It's a super heavy duty zipper, super heavy duty uh, container and you can store a lot of valuable reels in there. Along that same line, we'll just carry that on because here's three more items. We talked about protecting reels the other day, but we'll talk about, uh, about that again here briefly. Um, from 13 Fishing, these are the Skull Caps. That's my favorite 
real storage solution if it's just one or it's on a rod take your reel slide that over the side this is literally like the the wrist snap that we used to play with as little kids pop that one around take the other one go over the side now that reel is totally protected on or off the rod and then two more items this is such a no-brainer getting those rod sleeves to protect your rods to keep your rod guide safe anytime we're traveling whether it's rods in the boat whether it's rods at home all stacked up when we're traveling every single rod gets a sleeve then we bundle them together and these are rod the rod glove rod wraps all your rods in sleeves get bundled and then you do the little wrap up near the tips you do the large wrap down near the reels and it keeps everything secure there's no rattling there's no shaking driving down the road you're not listening to the sound of all those rods tearing each other to pieces everything is silent and secure these are just little items that we've learned through the years right little things that make all the difference when you're out there on the road whether that's to drive down to the boat ramp or whether that's to drive all the way across the country. It just keeps your tackle secure. I got one other thing for you. If you are a guy like this, like Matt, that just throws all of his baits in a individual uh, container, get some, these are made by owner. These are hook caps and mm -hmm. it makes it, makes it so much easier when you're grabbing a bait out of a, a open box like that. The hooks are always hooked in, you know, through the, the split rings, through the eyes of the bait. So it just, it just saves uh, your baits from getting hook rash. It saves time untangling those baits out of your box. So I went ahead and just put some caps on, I appreciate on that. one of your baits. But uh, <laughs> they come in like four different sizes. The greens, uh, purple. Purple is probably the most universal size. That's going to be like your uh, top water hook size, your crankbait hook size. Okay. And then your yellows are going to be for like your two-aught size hooks. So you can go with the real big blue ones if you have some real big swim baits. But for the most part, the purples and yellows are going to be the colors you're going to need. All right. I've got a couple more things here. Uh, these are, and I saved some of my favorite things for last, actually. These are, again, from Busby, the Quick Cubes. These are soft bags that you can pack a ton of things into. I have, I'm constantly organizing and reorganizing how I do soft plastics looking for solutions. I've put them in hard containers, soft containers, clipped them together through the years. Have you watched 10 years worth of tactical bass and storage solutions? I'm constantly changing how I organize because I've never quite felt like we were dialed. I finally feel dialed. These quick cubes are awesome. They're water resistant bags uh, that I can just cram. So like this one says mixed drop shot. This is a grab and go, literally just mixed drop shot that I keep in my boat. And these are standardized sizes, so they stack really well. So I'm not wasting any space. This is the medium deep. So that exact same thing, just thicker, top to bottom. This is my finesse jig trailers, finesse jig trailer. They make labels for them too that you can add on. I mean, I'm gonna open one just to I was make gonna a point. Say, I, was, I was gonna do this. Here we go. Oh, dude, it's one. These are awesome two, because three, they're they're four, rigid, so five. they they keep their shape. So even when they're empty, they still hold their shape. And I use these all the time in my boat. <laughs> <laughs> Glad this is your stuff. We're... There are 29 packs of jig trailers in one soft container, totally organized. Well, we're totally organized in my boat. And then this one, the larger size, they, they make a large and a large deep. This is creatures. This is just a hodgepodge of all the creatures. And frankly, there's a lot of worms in there too, but it's all the things I could need in my boat. I have one container, whether I find out I'm gonna be flipping, whether I find out I'm gonna be throwing a shaky head, whatever it might be, it's all in one container that I just leave stuck in a compartment in the boat and I never worry about whether or not I'm gonna have one of whatever it might be. I've, I've got one of almost everything just tucked away. And then last is the actual tackle bag. This is the item that completely sold me uh, on the Busby stuff. And you guys have seen this a lot in the jet boat. 
I take them when we travel too, but my jet boat has literally zero storage in it. So I have to use tackle bags and I have two of these that I keep all of my stuff in. Uh, and again, it'll fit both soft bags as well as the rigid boxes. But these are amazing. Completely waterproof top, waterproof zipper. Uh, on the jet, all of my stuff is out and exposed. It's in the sun, it's in the rain, it's going to get wet. These are what I keep it in. Awesome waterproof zipper. These things are bulletproof. And I mean, I thrash them. I'm not nice to my gear. I, I wear things out. I go through it. And those bags have held up extremely well. I have two of those that are my full time tackle solution on my aluminum boat. And I absolutely love them. Again, it is high end gear. You're going to buy it once and then it's gonna hold up. I have beat these things and they're doing fantastic. Again, we know you probably don't need to fit, how many did I say? 28 or something? Or 28, yeah. Endless creature baits into a container, but maybe you do. Maybe you need one of these to hold all of your soft plastics. Maybe you need a better way to store your line or your hard baits or your swim baits. <clears throat> We've gone through and we are forever going through all those things that come to market looking for perfect solutions. Not everybody needs every one of them, but most people need something to help get their tackle organized. Do you have anything to add before we wrap it up? Yeah, we understand that most people don't need all this stuff. But right. for example, I mean, this week later, we're in South Carolina. Then the fall two weeks, and we're in Louisiana. And we, we're, we're all over the place. So it's so easy to be like, okay, I need all my Florida stuff here. I need all my Michigan stuff there. You know, and just we're always mixing and matching. So we understand that very few of you guys need all this, but these are the these are the situations that we're in and the gear that we found to help organize the different scenarios. You know, these bags are amazing. I used to use those Plano worm bags. I really like these. Uh, like like Matt said, you can have one for your individual. You can have a drop shot bag. You can have a tube bag. You can have all that stuff. It still holds a ton of plastics. Like I said, 26, 28 bags, and it's a smaller footprint. Um, just some cool ways to store stuff. Line, right? Who thinks about storing line? Who thinks about storing spinner baits in a little bag? It's just we're always playing around with uh, different ways to keep keep our gear nice, right? Like yeah, we, keep we, it protected. We spend a lot of money. We 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 go through a lot of stuff, and we want to. We want to protect it. Like I said, having having baits blow up because of the heat or having hooks rust, you have to throw the whole thing away is just something I hope you never have to uh, have to do. I've done it many times and it stinks. And hopefully uh, one of these or a few of these will help alleviate some of the stress in your life and organization. You know, we understand there's guys that just throw stuff in cardboard boxes and throw them in their boat, right? I'm so, that guy. Um, yeah, through the years, we've kind of tried a lot of things and this is what we've come up for the best ways to store these different different uh, yep. baits, different gear, different different rods, reels, all that sort of stuff. So, Now here's where we're going from here. This is important for you. We've done a handful of buyer's guides now. We're taking a little break. We're going to switch back to traditional content. We wanna give you some fall to winter transition, some winter stuff, three or four videos, and then we're going full tilt back into the buyer's guides. And by full tilt, I'm talking seven days a week. Every single day will be a buyer's guide as we head till Christmas. There are more of them than there have ever been before. They are completely stacked in for you. Uh, we talked about this in the previous videos, but in case you missed it, Tackle Warehouse has changed the way they're doing their sales this year. You probably noticed that now that we're here at Cyber Monday. Uh, it's structured a little differently. Some things aren't on sale that have been before. That's because they're doing multiple sales all through the fall and the holidays, breaking it up by group. So as we get into uh, a few videos out from now, we'll start getting into hard baits and then we'll end with those traditional videos that you're probably looking for. Rod and reel combos, that sort of stuff is all still coming before Christmas in time, but when those different sales are running so that you can maximize your savings uh, and we're not giving you that information at the wrong time when it won't help you. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon. See you guys.